This week on Tech Garage, we finish up Project M&M 2. Our Mercury Marauder gets the finishing touches. You do not want to miss it. Welcome to the final episode of Season 8, right here at Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, Dave, our Mercury Marauder, well, it made it back to the shop. Yeah, week two, John, of our project M&M 2. These Marauders are pretty remarkable. They only made 11,000 of them over two years, from 2003 to 2004. Over that same time, Toyota made 900,000 Camrys, so to give you an idea of how rare this vehicle is. And it's, it's super cool because they use the Cobra engine in it. It makes about 300 horsepower, so this is, this is a really rare find right here. Yeah, and for me, you know, I'm driving Project M&M 1, fell in love with it. This is a huge upgrade. Yeah. Not only do I have 300 horsepower, I'm a little more sporty, but I still got the Grandpa Marquis going on, so I'm feeling pretty good with this car. I'm going to keep it. Hey, you're a sleeper, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah. Well, for you guys that missed episode one, let's bring you up to speed. It all started out with Josh and Benjamin. They worked on the serpentine belt, and to do that, well, Dave, it was pretty simple. They took the tensioner off. They went ahead and took a picture to make sure everything was good, took the belt off, replaced the tensioner, then put the belt back on, made sure it was routed right. I've been driving it for a week, so I know the belt's in good shape. And that belt is so important because it's connected to so many different pieces of machinery on the front of that engine. You want to make sure that that is in good shape or you're going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, the hood struts were next, John. That was the first thing we noticed when we opened the hood. Uh, the hood came back down on us. You don't want to crack your skull open. You want to make it convenient for yourself as well. So the hood struts are easy to change. Just a couple of clips, one at the bottom of each strut and one at the top. We put the new struts on, they put the new struts on, and then new clip at the bottom, new clip at the top. Good to go. Yep, and I wasn't overly concerned with it, but it did have an overheating issue, and they put it up in the air, they lifted it up, they went through that bleeder, it did burp a little bit of air. You know, I've been driving it, like I said, and it never really got up to temperature. I still want to keep an eye on it. It's coming like coming out of emergency surgery. They just don't kick you out of the hospital, man. You <laughs> got to drive it for a while and you got to kind of rehab and recover. So we're just going to make sure it's all right, but I'm not worried about it. We got a whole engine and Rock Auto sent us up with gaskets and timing if we need it. All right, and it's, you know, some of the bigger stuff. There's some maintenance items that, that kind of fall on the list now. Oil change. If you're going to go through all this trouble, you want to change the fluids. You start with the oil. Spend the 30 bucks to do an oil right. change. You're putting the thing up on the rack anyway. Just drain the oil, uh, and then you're, you're going to have this car running for miles and miles and miles with clean oil. No doubt. And then they work their way back to the transmission. You're under there. Why not? So they drop the pan. Super easy one to get to on these marquees and the Murata. Same thing. Just drop the pan, put a new filter in, put new fresh fluid in there, torqued everything to specifications. We're good. Onward as they went. Yeah, we looked underneath last time, and we saw a fuel filter in there. Fuel filters are only good for about 50,000 miles to begin with. This car has 60, so if that is the original fuel filter, it needs to be changed. But we also noticed that there are a couple of hose clamps on there, <laughs> which those don't belong there. That should just snap into place. So that was pretty suspect from the beginning, so we had those guys change that. It didn't burn up, obviously. Yeah. They got it connected right. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, guys. Yeah, there you go. Now we're back in the differential service. Look out. Two more inches back. Just move back, move the pan back. They did the differential service, took the pan off, drained the fluid. Ooh, if it was smell of vision they told me that stuff stunk. So it was needed to changing. On that one, you actually have an additive. It's a posi track, which is cool. Kind of separates it from that marquee once again. Put the new additive, put the new fluid in. Differential, man, we're doing burnouts. While we're talking fluids, let's talk about air as a fluid. Now, that's inside the shocks. Right. This is a 20-year-old vehicle. Those are the original shocks. Uh, some of the seals and everything can get cracked and they start leaking. And just like in the office chair, like we talked about, you know, 20-year-old office chair, you sink down, the shocks are the same way. You just want to play it safe, replace the shocks on that, and that's what we did. Yeah, rockauto.com hooked us up with a Power Stop Complete Brake Kit. I love their kits, Dave, because no guessing. I mean, that's it. I mean, they went ahead and put all new brakes on it. Didn't even need it, but I'll tell you what, to put the Power Stop and with the Rock Auto Kit, that's a huge upgrade. For the power we're producing, thing stops on a dime. Exactly right. You know, going is important, but if you got 300 horsepower, stopping is even more important, and that's all about safety. And that's what this episode's all about is safety. Now that we got it mechanically sound, it's time to address some of these safety issues, Dave, and where should we start? Well, there's nothing more important than being able to see and having people see you, and that's where the headlights come in. We went to rockauto.com, got new headlights for this thing, and you can see the old ones are uh, they're just uh, all cloudy, and that's because there's a UV protectant on the outside of the headlights. 
just sitting for years in the sun. We're here in Florida. Uh, the sun beating on that thing got all foggy and, and there you go. And this is a beautiful thing. I mean, it is a mercury marauder. So that that's different than a marquee. You can see the blacked out stuff and these oh, yeah. parts are hard to find. RockAuto.com had everything and this is a specialty car, like you said. So pretty cool that we can replace that. And, you know, it's great that we can see, but <laughs> the wipers are mismatched. I think they were flopping around and yeah. they were scratching the glass when I turned them on. I mean, they're done. <laughs> they're no done. Good. That's yep. no good. Yep. So we should get to doing that. Yep. Got these from Rock Auto.com. Made in the USA, by the way. I like that a lot. Gotta love that. And John, a lot of folks, I've heard people make fun of other people because they don't know how to change their wipers and stuff <laughs> like that. This is kind of, there's a voodoo to it. There's, there's a lot of different options with wipers. Let me tell you, I'm an ASE master tech and changing wipers is a rocket science. It Gu is. Guys, this is gonna hurt when we tell you this. <laughs> Check the instructions. I know you never do Ouch. that. You need to look at it, yeah. Yeah, and this one's just gonna pop on and pop off. We're pretty lucky here, but got a pocket screwdriver. Yeah. There's a little tab down here. You push down and kind of work it off. We put these mats here. It's a really good idea. A towel, a shop rag, just in case your arm snaps down, you don't want to bust your windshield. So it's really uh, a good I, practice. I just hit it with a screwdriver that. there, yeah. Yep, so there you go. And just oh, work it off. Dave, it's rusty and nasty, so you're going to yeah. have to pull and fight. But once you get them off, you can see they're all deteriorated. These ones, beautiful, nice ones. It's the big one with the form here. I don't, I don't ever put the blades in. I just put the whole thing in. When you put the blades in, it's a real mess. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop this one back in push the tab down and push it in and then the tab. John, I'm still working over here. <laughs> See that, exactly. I told you, it can be well, tough. I'll tell you what, Dave, yeah. I'll come over and help you. Yeah. Oh, I know what, I'll get Josh and Benjamin on it. That's Don't worry perfect. about it. <laughs> this thing is a budget. I no, know this one too, here. look at that. So yeah. it went in and locked, just leave it on there. We'll get it during the break. We'll have to get it off it. You know what, Dave, it's probably almost melted on there. These things look like they're 800 years old and yeah. it doesn't even look like it's the right arm. So just <laughs> just leave it and we'll knock it out, no worries. Not my problem anymore. One other safety item we need to address is the tires, man. These tires are shot, they're mismatched. They're just wore out, the car's shaking. I can tell belts are shifted. We're not gonna have to worry about that anymore, Dave. Continental hooked us up with four brand new tires. Yeah, when you're making 300 horsepower, you've gotta get that horsepower to the ground. That's why we're using Continental Extreme Contact Tires, and we're gonna install those and do a whole bunch more when we come back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by AP Laser, leading the way. Brotherstrucks.com, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, Dave, Josh made short work of those tires, and boy, they look good. Yeah, he took it up the hill to the other shop there, uh, put these Continentals on. They look great, and they're great for any weather. Uh, I've heard about them, and folks that have them love them. No doubt about it. And you know, with the power stop brakes through the rim there, man, this thing's coming along great. Time to turn our attention to the headlights, and they need attention too, Dave. They do, and it's, it's not a major deal, but you look, you see the old uh, faded yellow headlights. This thing's been sitting around for 20 years in the Florida sun. And year after year, the, the UV rays beating on these coatings on the plastic. And back in the old days, when we were kids, John, these headlights were made out of glass. So this didn't <laughs> happen. Uh, but uh, of course, now with the plastics, uh, the UV rays, dirt on the road, that kind of thing can yellow these headlights. You've also seen where folks get moisture in, in between, just water vapor in there. Yep. It's time to replace them if that happens. W with a, a yellowed headlight like this, you can buff it. There are all kinds of uh, products out there to do that. Some people say toothpaste will do it. Right. Um, yeah, it'll work. Yeah, we did little... that on Tech Garage. We buffed yeah. one up. But you know, Rock Auto hooked us up. You can see right here, man, look at the difference. And the beautiful part about this is actually this Marauder has the blacked out headlight. So not only do they have parts for the regular marquee, they have it actually specifically for the Marauder, which was only made two years. That speaks volumes for rockauto.com. It certainly does, it certainly does. Yeah. You know, Benjamin, our lead tech, he kind of went ahead and got this thing started. It was super easy. He took three little push pins off, the beautification cover here, covering up the radiator and the support. Once he got that out, there was a few bolts right here on the back of the grill. Good idea to take the grill out. It's painted so we didn't want to chip it up. Popped that off, got the grill laid up there safe. Dave, he said there was three Three bolts here. One, two, three. One on my Man. side, two on yours. Look at that. I'll race Let's you. Let's do it. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right. So I got a magnet here so yes, you don't sir. drop it, but we'll get these three bolts out. Yep. Boy, this car's come a long way. No, it's true. And a lot of it's, you know, minor maintenance items. We're doing fluids and brakes and that sort of thing. Uh, so this is a, a really nice find here. And the headlights are kind of the final touch. And 
And needless to say, headlights are important. It helps you see down the road, helps other people see you, maybe more important. And uh, it's one thing you want to you want to keep after. You don't want to settle for, for yep. a dirty headlight like that. Uh, not yet. Thought I had it. Yep. And um, especially with this Marauder, that's pretty cool with the blacked out ones on the front and the blacked out ones on the back. Yeah. Really, you can't even see that through these are in such bad shape. Yep. Oh, nope. what do you need, the magnet? No, give me the magnet. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Confused. No, sorry. Awesome. Was first. Well, we'll get that out. Yeah, we went through the transmission service, all the fluids, the serpentine belt, the drive system. Man, we got the brakes on yeah. there. I mean, just everything you would want to do to an old car, Dave, but yeah. not even an old car, just something you'd want to do to any one of the cars. But the Marauder, ooh, man, this thing's gonna be awesome. Hey, yeah, you ready to go? It. Yeah, there might be a clip here right, I have to push clip, down. Push down on that and I'll wiggle and there pull. There you go, okay. I better unplug it first. Let me unplug it, Good one idea. harness. Yeah. Man, look at that. Tuck that through, there we go. Try That's not to it. scratch the bumper. It needs a paint job anyway, but yeah. hey, let's keep it nice. You got it. Man, look at the difference. Whew. That is amazing. That's unbelievable. So we'll take our new headlight. We got all the wire harness already built into it. All we have to do is just turn around and reassemble it. I'll kind of work it in there for you. Let's see, it's going in this direction, right? Yep. Yep. And that's just as easy to put in as it was to take out. Just a few bolts and we are good to go. And that's going to finish up everything we have to do on this car. Yeah, that's for us, but you know, the guys at the Modular Motorsports race in MMR, they actually taught us how to bleed it. We got it up, we bled it. We don't have any problems, that's the beautiful thing. They're experts when it comes to these motors, but I do have a little tick, I could live with it, it's fine, but you know, why not send it to the experts at the Modular Motorsports Racing? Let them go ahead and just do the heads, we'll get new heads on it. I want this thing primo, Dave, I may keep it. I like this one. It's a pretty sweet vehicle. Yep. Well, do not go anywhere because we've got a whole lot more here on our final episode of the season here at Tech Garage, presented by Rock Auto dot com. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. It's time for the Garage Ed segment, and this week it's a little bit different. You know, we've been asking you to send in your questions via social media. You've done just that, and we appreciate it. The first question, John, comes from Chris in Chicago. Now, Chris has a clunk. Driving along, I get a loud clunk. It only happens once in a while. It sounds like something in the suspension system. What are your thoughts? No, shocking, Dave. Chicago, I love it, but pothole capital of the world. No doubt. <laughs> Learned a term there called tacoing the rim. Never heard that before. I've done it on a bike. Hit the hole so hard, the rim <laughs> folds in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, I'm feeling you, but here's the deal, man. You're just gonna have to articulate that suspension system. Sounds kind of weird. Just go slow, find a grocery store swale where you're going into the store. Maybe even go in reverse. Turn the steering wheel back and forth, articulate it. See if you can get it to pop. It sounds like a ball joint. Dave, you showed how to measure that ball joint, that actual play in that ball joint. Do the same thing Dave did. Go back a few episodes, check it out, and uh, you'll be fine. All righty, the next question coming from Kevin in Detroit. Uh, Kevin says, squeak, squeak, squeak when turning my <laughs> Chevy Malibu. I think there's a mouse in your car. Uh, greased all the Zerk fittings and suspension points. What else should I look for? Yeah, that happens a lot too. I mean, you did the right thing there, Kevin, definitely by greasing everything. But, you know, check those bearings. We had a strut bearing, an upper strut bearing. Dave, you got under there, you shook the car. I believe seasons go, you actually check that strut bearing to the left and to the right, especially with a Malibu. Just kind of stop the car, do a dry park test, push up and down on it. Just just kind of feel it. You can kind of isolate it. You can get down there, touch it, feel it, turn it, and then check those bushings for the strut. That's always a good thing to do. Strut bushings, that would be my go. All right, good good call. Uh, another Chevy driver here. We got Matt in Tampa, Florida uh, with a 2014 Chevrolet 1500 pickup. Uh, it's got a light groaning, kind of a growling noise when he's driving. He says he can shut the engine off and coast and the sound is still there. Ooh, nice move, Matt. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely eliminated the engine, the belt, the accessories, the yeah. drive system, smart. Take it all the variables. Definitely, so yeah, just that's that bearing deal, probably. You need to change road surfaces. We did it on the show once again, great question. We uh, swerve to the right, swerve to the left, see if it changes. You're actually changing the weight shift of the car and you're taking the weight on and off of that bearing. Change road surfaces, go from an asphalt to a concrete. If the noise changes, well then it's probably tire because it just goes along with the road. If the noise doesn't change, check those bearings. Get it up in the air with a stethoscope. Do that uh, 11 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Dave, you did all that stuff, man. Just go back, watch the show. That's a good one right there, no doubt about it. Excellent. And now we've got a Ford driver here. Frank from Anaheim out in California. Has a 2012 Mustang. It is a GT. 
had an alignment and the car still pulls to the right. So Ooh, now what? Oh yeah, yeah, well that's it. I mean, you just had an alignment that's pulling to the right. Remember the two fingers on the steering wheel, if it's pulling out, we just talked about that today, but we didn't do that, Frank. Great, I appreciate you guys writing these questions in because we should have covered that. If it's still pulling, go with the tires. Just take the two front tires and cross them. Now, if not a brake pull, if you're hitting the brakes, focus on the brakes but if you're just driving along and it's still pulling all your suspension components are in tip-top shape remember that and you just had an alignment think about crossing those two front tires if the pull goes away it's the tires if the pull shifts in the other direction it's the tires if the pull stays the same I check that alignment again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how much you pay for that alignment that is gonna wrap it up for this session of Garage Ed. Thank you for writing in, everybody. Keep those questions coming and we'll get to them when we're able. We've got more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com coming up right after this, so stay tuned. Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com is brought to you by Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. NH Oil Undercoating, the official oil-based rust prevention system. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. It's the MTTT, Master Technician Tech Tip. And this one's a good one. Let me give you a scenario. You know, you're going and you crank up your car and it's idling pretty rough, or you start it up and then it stalls, boom. You might have a throttle body that's dirty. Why and what's going on? Well, let's look at the evolution of the throttle bodies. We'll start right here on the actual table. This is carburation, we all remember that. The key with carburation though is the fuel's dumping through these throttle bodies and these throttle bodies are actually getting washed off by the fuel. So we didn't have much of an issue there. Now we go over to TBI, throttle body injection. Once again, the injector's up on the top and we're actually washing over the throttle plates right there. So we're keeping it clean, we don't have much of an issue. Now we went to multi-port injection, still not a problem. We are injecting past the throttle body. We're injecting right on top of the valves there, but because we're wetting the valves, we don't have a lot of that blow-by coming back up into the intake manifold, making our throttle bodies real dirty. Hence, direct injection. Now we have a problem. We're up to direct injection, shooting right into the cylinder with a high pressure pump. We're not washing those valves at all. And during those other strokes, a lot of times we're getting a lot of that carbon puffing up in the cylinder. So what do you want to do? You want to clean your throttle body. I want to warn you right here. You may have a drive-by wire. If you have a drive-by wire throttle body, either want to unplug it or follow the manufacturer's specifications. There's probably a relearn procedure you're going to have to go through. So don't go poking on this one unless you know what's going on. We got some carburetor cleaner and some throttle body cleaner from rockauto.com and our Mustang couldn't have been any easier. All we did was we basically just went up to the top of it, took off the little air plenum there, took the screw off the clamp, pried it back. Once we got it back, we could see that our throttle body was pretty dirty. Went ahead and sprayed it with the actual throttle body cleaner. We made sure that all the gook and debris and gunk was off of it. Opened it up, did both sides. Just checked it, make sure it's clear. We didn't have any stickers on there that says don't clean it. You have to be careful. Sometimes Ford doesn't even want you to clean it. So like I said, just follow your manufacturer specifications. Once you do that, your car's gonna idle like a sewing machine, man, like a top. It's gonna be good. Now that your throttle body's clean, we're gonna check in with Tom and Dave and see how to keep it that way. One of the things I really love about having Tom Taylor here in the studio, he's not just selling parts, he's an engineer, so he knows how all this works. And the stuff we're talking about here, it's not just about the throttle body, Tom, there's other parts affiliated with it. How does that all work? Yeah, yeah upstream in, of, from the throttle body, you have other parts. You start out with the air filter, and if you think about all the contaminants that might reach the throttle body, the air filter is the first thing. If that's not working right, if it's a dirty air filter, or if you've tried to save a little a few bucks by cleaning instead of replacing it, and you cleaned it with compressed air, which actually blows little holes in a lot of air filters. You got bits of air filter making their way to the throttle body. Or Not to mention the particulate matter you're trying to keep out in the first place is getting through much easier. Right, yeah, so replace the air filter versus, versus uh, tr trying to clean it. And if you have an aftermarket air filter that is has oil maybe, don't put excessive oil on it because that can get sucked in to the uh, to the system. And, and the, the next thing is off, often a mass airflow sensor, which is, is uh, has little heating elements that can easily get coated with oil or pieces of air filter. 
So, so that if, if that if that's measuring the airflow incorrectly, that can affect the movement of the throttle body. Uh, the thing I love again about having you in is I always learn something, and we appreciate your coming in all season long. Tom Taylor at RockAuto.com, where you can find all the parts your car will ever need. Well, over there to wrap the season up, we've got John Gardner. John, let's button this thing up. How are they looking, Josh? They're on? They're on right now. Man, high, high beam, beam, low beam. Low beam. Man, that's a win. You they busted your off. knuckles with this Marauder, man, and it paid off, man. We roasted the tires. I'm talking about a bellow of smoke and a big old fishtail. This car is awesome, Dave. It is awesome. Restored to its former glory. At what price? Holy mackerel. $34,845 in 2003. That is $9.2 trillion in today's money. Yeah, Marauder for sale. <laughs> <laughs> you should hold on to that thing, man. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what, it's been a great season. Thank you guys so much. You got it. We learned all kinds of really cool technical stuff and we taught folks that it may seem intimidating at first but you can do stuff like this at home once you understand how it works. And that's what we're all about here at Tech Garage. We're about you the viewer. We're a show for the people so we want to thank you the viewer. We want to thank rockauto.com for the sponsorship and Chipola College for the phenomenal facilities. And don't forget the best crew in the business all you guys out there. Thank you very much for getting it done. Yeah, no doubt about it. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, YouTube, all the past seasons, Twitter, all those cool things. Instagram, we're all over the place, and this is not it. We'll be there all season long. Don't worry about it. It's the end of this season, but, man, it was a win. Thank you, all guys. Right. And we will see you next time. So yeah. long. Yeah. Woohoo! Nice job. Nice job. Good job Way to go. Way nice to go. Big Scott O.